Hello and welcome to episode number 97 of the Audio Podcast with the VK, ugh, the VK Bros. <laughs> it is early on a Saturday morning, if early. you can't tell. How are you, Alex? Uh, I'm good. I want to start with something that happened to me last night mm-hmm. that we might need the audience's help to solve this okay. case. All right. I love a good case. I was on a Gold Coast Are yesterday. you trying to turn this into like a murder mystery podcast? It's worse. True crime? It's way worse than that. It's a true crime. Yeah. It could potentially be a true crime story. Right. But we definitely need... It's worse than murder, I think. In bum, my... bum, bum. So I had to work late. I didn't get back to the shed till like 7 o'clock last night. Mm-hmm. And I had to tuck some cars away. And I thought, okay, it's too late. I'll order a pizza. So I tried to ring my place. Mm-hmm. Not taking takeaway orders. Too busy. Mm-hmm. They're understaffed. That sucks. So I try to use the Domino's app. Just a nightmare. Kept putting me through this cycle. I'm like, okay, I'll just stop at Domino's and pick up a pizza. Mm-hmm. Go to Domino's. I park maybe 80 meters away. Walk, very cold at night. Walk to Domino's mm-hmm. where I place my order. They say it's going to take 15 minutes. Everything's very well oiled. The place is immaculately clean. Mm-hmm. I've got a seat where I can see the... I basically can see the entire kitchen. I can see where the people are loading the toppings on the mm-hmm. left. And on the right-hand side, I can see where the pizzas are coming out. Yep. And the guys are grabbing it, and boxing it, cutting it. Mm-hmm. So I've got a pretty good vantage point. 15 minutes in, the guy drops the pizza out of the oven <laughs> so I laugh to myself because I've dropped pizza yeah before. we've been there it happens it we've happens. been there yeah. if, for anyone who doesn't know our family owned a pizza shop for like 30 years yeah. so we've all been there well yeah and I took a photo of it because it was mm. the toppings were my toppings <laughs> and I sent it to the group chat like hope this isn't mine yeah, yeah. and had a little laugh to myself because I knew that it, it actually was no it, it didn't it didn't match my order exactly. The toppings did. Right. But I ordered thin crust. Okay. So I'm like, okay. Anyway, uh, as I'm texting, I look up and the pizza's gone off the floor. Mm -hmm. There's a shadow of where the pizza was. Obviously a heat shadow on the, Mm -hmm. on the ground. Bit of pizza sweat. And, uh, I'm looking around and then they, someone comes from around the right hand side and says, pick up order for Alex. (laughs) And I'm like, wow, that timing's really that's concerning. Concerning. Yep. I walked to the car again, about eighty meters. So you didn't check it before you left the store. No. Ooh, rookie, rookie no. error. So I go to the car, get in. My drive's only like six minutes. Yep. And any only reason why I'm talking about the time backwards and forwards mm-hmm. is because the pizza didn't seem as warm <laughs> as when I usually get them delivered. Okay, even the box felt I'm like, like I know how, what a, because my car was warm inside. Right. But the box just didn't feel mm. as warm. Now, so am was, I being sensitive? Was it, was it something where like maybe the toppings felt hot, but the base felt colder than it should have? Well, you're only like really... Like you just spent some time on a cold hard surface? Well, as you would know, you only really feel the heat in the box on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, through the base, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, but then I'm, I'm thinking, well, am I just sensitive to it? Because I've just watched this pizza get dropped out of the oven. Yeah. So I get upstairs and I'm telling Tasha the story, joking about it. Ha ha ha. Like, what if it's mine? Ha <laughs> ha. Trying, re, you know, re, redoing the same joke, but mm. just changing it to get, a, see if I can get a better reaction. Mm-hmm. Didn't. But anyway, open the box up. Normal crust. <laughs> Standard crust. <laughs> so I'm like, I pulled the picture up that I sent you guys, yeah. and I'm like, kind of compare- and comparing. Comparing the two, I didn't take a photo. <laughs> Enhance. Yeah, I didn't. Enhance. What I should have done is taken a photo of the finished product or what I was was yeah, given, so you could forensically uh, check them side to by analyze side. it. Yeah. yeah, check for placings of toppings. But I may have had floor pizza, <laughs> <laughs> and where I want the help of the audience is I want, like, does anyone who work out there surely that's not policy. Surely you don't reserve drop pizza. It did drop perfectly on the ground, mind yeah. you. Like it was fully formed. You've seen the photo. Maybe I'll send you the photo and you can post it up on mm-hmm. the, so people can see it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You could, you could have swept it up 
brushed off the bottom yeah. and put it on a box. They were under the pump too. Like the, you know, the, the little um, area that they have all the pieces waiting to go mm-hmm. full, yeah. full, 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 full. Yeah. And I, I'm wondering, did I eat floor pizza? <laughs> you may have. This, so, all right, here's my, here's my take on it. Your first mistake was going to Domino's. Well, I, that was not my first choice. I know, I know it wasn't your first choice. I possibly would have picked a different food item rather than going to Domino's. Like what? I don't know, burgers or something? KFC, where the line goes to the, the out to the street. Oh, yeah, and all the food served off the floor at KFC. <laughs> <laughs> that's, one of, that's one of the special secret herbs and spices. Yeah, it is. A bit of floor <laughs> dust. <laughs> um, but that, to me, is your first mistake. But... Can you tell me more about the staff? Is this like a typical Domino's uh, chain where it's mainly run by young kids? Yes, there was one older manager who was mostly operating the people on the phones yep. and then coordinating some of like the pickups. So more more surrounded by the money, the financial side. Yeah, there was three girls on the toppings side doing the toppings, mm-hmm. and then there was two guys on the oven side loading the ovens, and then there were some people that were out of sight. Yeah which I believe are pizza base washers, <laughs> which are off camera, yeah. that, that are, are literally dusting down pizza bases mm. to, to then give back to the guys to put on. And because I'm kicking myself because I was watching everything, but I was too wrapped up texting you guys yeah, about to this funny moment. Attention. I lost eyes of the prize. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I think I hate floor pizza. So <laughs> you, you, you very well may have. So he, here's my thing. He, Look, number one, just a little side comment. It still boggles my mind the sheer amount of staff that these pizza places have these days compared to what we did when we had our own business. Yes, but I know the volume's higher. The volume here was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And look, I I get that to a degree. And fast. Like, I was in and out in 14 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. (laughs) In 14 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) So that's one thing. Now, the, the demographics of the staff, I find, they could go either way because on the one hand... Kids are likely to try to just cover up their mistake by brushing off the bottom of your pizza and moving on with life. Yeah. But also, you know, in this economy, cost of living pressures, I'm pretty sure that in a lot of places, it's like, oh, I've done a dropsy. Oh, we'll just share this one. We'll have to make that order again. Yeah, see, I don't think... I don't think the staff would ever choose floor pizza when you can get... But floor pizza is also free pizza. Yeah, miscut pizza is also free pizza. And I'd rather miscut have eat miscut pizza than floor pizza. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's wrong. Maybe, yeah, maybe you got served. So put in the, the only thing is, I just, I don't understand where the, in, like, I, the only incentive to give you floor pizza is because they were under the pump and they didn't want to do your order again. They were totally under the pump. Yeah. And like, I don't you know. You were just saying maybe how quick guy. and efficient these people were. Yeah, absolutely. So they could have just flicked your order back into it and had you out in another probably eight minutes. Well, I mean, I don't know if it was my pizza. It could have been yeah. someone else's pizza, but the timing was yeah. so close. I'm checking under it. I'm looking. And I'm like, what would I look at? The floor was pretty clean. What do I even look for? Yeah. You know, there was a... um. There was a barcode sticker on the on the base of it. No, not really. But can you imagine? <laughs> but, um, no, I. We might need anyone that has worked at a Domino's or or any other food. Yeah, what's like, policy? What's the policy? <laughs> I don't know what our policy was, which was throw it in the bin and yeah. then make another one. Yeah, or I'd, it, I'd probably eat it sometime. Our 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 shop floors at the pizza shop were immaculate. I would eat off the floor of Pinnacle Pizzas. Back yeah, I don't do that. I don't eat floor stuff, but. But well, some do. I'm also the guy who used to, I always remember one night, blind service paradise, 18, 19 years old, not much money left in my bank account. And on the way out, you know, we used to get pizza slices. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, that point where you just pretty much can't even see anymore. Yep. Don't even know what you're doing. And I had like two slices of pizza and I've gone to eat one and I've dropped it. Yeah. In the middle of service paradise. Yeah. Rat city. Yeah. Right, you don't know how many rats are in Surface Paradise until you go there as a designated driver or to pick someone up <laughs> at three in the morning. They are everywhere. Yeah. So I've dropped it and it's gone uh, topping side down, the but worst. I had no money left. That's the worst way. So I picked it back up and I'm like, it'll it'll still be good. And then I dropped it again <laughs> on the base this time. Picked it up, blew it off. So I would eat that Domino's small pizza and I wouldn't really care about it. I, I feel like that's why I've got such a strong constitution. Too. Yeah, the one that's sick all the time. I uh, would consider myself 
a more sophisticated individual than the But you other can't say that when the beginning of your story is about you going to fucking Domino's. <laughs> I had a pure desperate. I had no other option. It yeah, was late. You had many other options. There's this Brisbane city, son. To, but to you get, could have literally go on if you were if you were really as I did consider as getting Indian. cultured as you think you are. You would have gone to some restaurant and ordered a sit down pizza. Here we go. Here's cultured for you. I, I went to Domino's. I went to Domino's, <laughs> and and no, there I, was and there was extra cultures on the bottom of your yeah, pizza. Yeah. I, I I did go for the quick fix. It is reflected upon me. I did make a mistake. However, I did try my local place, the best place. Mm-hmm. And it didn't work, and I was getting late, and I was getting desperate, and desperate ca- time calls for potential floor pieces. And I like how getting late is. Didn't you leave here at seven o'clock? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not not Dude, that late. Usually like two. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like OT. <laughs> okay. So that... put in the comments if you think. Well, what's policy? And do you think maybe put a poll up to see did I eat floor pizza? Yeah. Do you reckon Alex ate floor pizza or not? Mm. Um, this actually is a pretty good segue into something that is uh, way more important. Uh, speaking of diseases, debatable. Uh, this month is CMV Awareness Month. So for those of you who have forgotten or haven't been following for very long, so CMV is a, di- a disease. It's called cytomegalovirus, and it's a disease that probably no one really knows about. And everyone, particularly people who are thinking about having children or who have children, should know about. Right. So what is cytomegalovirus? It's, it's from the same family as like uh, chickenpox, herpes, that, that sort mm. of family of viruses. And for the, like, the vast majority of people, especially in Australia, have had it at some point in their life. And normally they get absolutely zero symptoms unless you're uh, immune compromised. Right. But for the most part, most of us have had it. And it's one of those things in life where once you like chicken pox, you've had it the one time and you won't get it again. Yep. And so that's why it doesn't really get spoken about a lot. But the people it can particularly affect are immune compromised individuals, but also babies. Right. Now, some not so fun facts about CMV. Number one, CMV is the number one most regularly passed on disease from a mother to their unborn child. Right. The number one disease that gets passed on. Yep. About one in three kids, so they, they call it congenital CMV when you when the child gets it whilst they're still in the womb. And they typically will only get it if the mother hasn't had CMV before and contracts it during pregnancy. Right. And the reason why CMV is so such a scary disease is or should be, because well, I'll get to that. But is the way that it affects uh, babies in particular is that it can stop the replicating of cells. Mm. So depending on how far through the pregnancy the mother is when she contracts CMV and gets passed on to the child, if they're at a, a, a period that is early on into the development, it can have really bad effects on, right. uh, you know, a lot of kids are born with shrunken heads because their brains don't yep. develop properly and therefore the head shape doesn't um, expand with the size of the brain. They can have a lot of different organ issues. They can have limb, like, disfigure, like... The most common things, and, and these can occur even down the track, is hearing loss and eye issues. Mm-hmm. And a lot of babies that are born seemingly f- fine can develop these things down the track because they got CMV in the womb. And the reason why this is so uh, close to my heart is we had this experience with sure. Jake, which most, well, some of you might know about, some of the new listeners might not know about. So during, so my son, my second son, Jake, was born on the 25th of February this year. And during uh, the pregnancy, Amanda, my wife, contracted CMV for the first time. Uh, f- fortunately uh contracted it somewhere around the 32 to 33 week mark Mm -hmm. so we we had we were running this battery of tests like but literally the doctors were saying to us uh you won't know if anything is wrong until your baby's born yeah stressful which is stressful as um at least when we were running like the scans and stuff like that like we had to get extra scans uh there was no physical deformities that we could see Mm -hmm. so we were like you know not confident but we were quietly hopeful mm-hmm. that we weren't going to have any dramas. He's Jake's passed all of his hearing and sight tests for now, but um, he has to get regular uh, visits to the hospital up until I think the age of five or six, wow. especially the tests like the hearing and stuff like that. Um, the eye test was uh, was 
crazy You've spoken about that graphic. before. I've right? spoken about it before and I won't go into it again. But <clears throat> the reason why, like, what boggles my mind about CMV and the reason why I'm, I'm so happy to know, I didn't even know there was a CMV awareness month for a start, mm. but I didn't even know CMV existed until, like, this is my second child and we only found out about it because Amanda got it. Yeah. It is the most common disease which causes birth defects. Yeah. And the way that you can contract it is by contact with uh, bodily fluids of, of an infected person. And <clears throat> what, again, boggles my mind is, like, when you, when you get pregnant, your doctor has regular checkups with you, and they run through a whole range of things. No one ever spoke to us about it. Knowing full well that this was our second pregnancy, the majority of mothers who get CMV for the first time during pregnancy, it's because their toddler has brought it home from daycare, and then they've interacted with the toddler and that's how they've gotten it. Yeah. So anyone who's already got a child, doctors should be speaking to you about this stuff. Well, the fact that when when it was raised for you, <coughs> I did the ask around. Parents, like older people, no one's heard of it. No, no, not one person I spoke about had heard of CMV. Mm -hmm. The first time I'd heard it since we've spoken about it was Barstool had done a... a thing on it all oh, right and it said okay. it's the number one disease no one talks about yeah 100 yeah. percent, absolutely and and the thing is is it's re not rel it's not easily preventable but there are measures that you can take sure. if you had known about it so literally these are the measures whilst you're pregnant like look number one you can get yourself tested to see if you've had it before that's the number one thing. Yeah. So if you are thinking about getting pregnant or if you are pregnant, go and go and speak to your doctor and see if you can get tested to see if you have had CMV yeah. in the past. Because if you've had it previously, it's not it's a non-factor. Yeah. It's only if you have it for the first time during your pregnancy. If you haven't had it, you can take steps to make sure you're not exposing yourself to other people's bodily fluids, particularly your toddlers, yeah. during that time. So it could be something as simple as buying yourself a box of latex gloves when you have to change nappies. Yeah. Right? Stuff like that. Not not kissing your kid or getting them snotting all over you or licking your face. I know it can be hard, but if you know about it, you can actually take steps to yeah, try to, to reduce your risk. That's right. And like obviously we we've we had a toddler, he brought would have brought it home from daycare. Nate's not showing any symptoms because the vast majority of healthy people show no symptoms mm. at all. And yeah, it's it's honestly it's something that I really, really wish more people knew about. I wish we knew about it because it could have saved us a hell of a lot of stress. Because yeah. I mean, when you look at the amount of measures that people have taken in the last two years to prevent themselves getting COVID, we could have done similar things to prevent us getting CMV. And I suppose the only thing <laughs> I'm guessing what you're asking is that you tell your network, you spread the word. I want people to talk about it. Yeah. And I mean, like, we are at the age, we're in our 30s, uh, early to mid 30s. We all pass the mid now. You old fuck. <laughs> um, this when people have kids a lot of the yeah. time. Around that 30 year old mark is when, when people generally start talking about having kids. And talk to your friends about it because it is one of those things where, unfortunately, uh, you, can, you can take some mitigations. But if you don't, and you don't even know about it, it's it's a scary thought. We had, we had a friend who was trying to conceive, and at the time they were trying to conceive, ended up, I can't even remember how it came up. I think they went to get a test, maybe for COVID or something, right? because they got some symptoms with something, and then they actually tested positive for CMV at that time whilst they were trying to conceive. So they're like, well, the doctors are like, stop. Wow, okay. Stop trying to conceive now, because if you do it now, it's you'll have problems. Yeah. So, talk yeah. about it. Please talk about it. So yes. that's your challenge for everyone that's uh, watching or listening. Yeah, ha to... have a conversation with someone this week about CMV, yeah. cytomegalovirus. Like Barstool said, it is the number one most important disease that nobody talks about. Yeah. So yeah, get the word out there. Cool. Now the next thing we want to talk about, we had some, we had a comment on last week's episode, which yep. we love. We love interaction. Mm -hmm. Um. He went through a lot of effort to put in, which we appreciate a mm -hmm. lot. And you may have accidentally, <laughs> <laughs> you may have accidentally uh, dismissed. Dismissed. Yeah. So the, st the story goes. So Jason handles the, Jason gets all the comments, mm -hmm. but he'll usually send me a picture of it so we can sort of discuss um, replies. But the way YouTube displays comments, you, YouTube is funny sometimes. Mm. Sometimes it'll show a notification that there's a comment there yeah. and there's just no comment there. Yeah. 
which I think when that happens, it's because someone has put something in the comment which violates their uh, um, terms and conditions, whether it's a link or... Right. Links were the big one. So early on during all the Pandy stuff, when people were trying to like reference links, oftentimes it would coming up, they would say that there was a comment and there'd be like a preview of it in your notification screen, but then the comment wouldn't be there because I think YouTube was banning these links. Yeah. Which I guess kind of makes sense because the website doesn't want you clicking a link, taking you to a different oh, website. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That. <clears throat> so Jason had sent me a picture of the text. Yeah. But it was only the top. There, mu there must have so been a... So I had made a mistake and this not to make excuses because I don't, I, I will apologize for the relatively dismissive <laughs> term of my, my response. Um, but I just, I've had a hectic week at work and the whole, the, both the kids have been sick again this week. So it's literally, I, I looked at it, I saw the notification, I screenshotted it, I sent it to you, I penned a response and I moved on. And what I didn't realize was that what I had seen that I missed the, slightly lighter text yeah. that says read more yeah. at the bottom of it and i only responded to the first paragraph which was extremely minor <laughs> yeah now i i don't know what got me thinking about it i was like i actually was driving home and i thought i hadn't seen i just wanted to see if there was any um if there's any like if a conversation had developed from it mm. and i literally pulled the car over and then i clicked the read more like whoa <laughs> i was like well we've missed and there was a yeah. lot of effort put into it a yeah, lot and a lot of effort. i would encourage it like we're not going to read it because it's, it is super long and it's a lot of numbers and data and stuff like that but it's literally it's everything that we've been asking for so yep. what what you said when we spoke about it on the phone during the week is that this comment is literally what we've been asking for from people in the the pro vaccination camp which is show us some numbers that support your argument yeah right and and they did that yeah they largely they showed heaps of data that supported their argument so props to you for doing that yeah really really appreciate it um what it the one response i will give to it is what it does highlight for me is it is extremely difficult to do any sort of statistical comparison between countries or even between pre and post vaccine rollout purely based on the number of factors which change during that time sorry take a backward step the comment was in response to our comparison of our covid deaths yeah compared to our vaccination <laughs> rates compared to gibraltar yeah because we used gibraltar we, we were keeping an eye on gibraltar because they're way over 100 they're yeah. the most vaccinated population yeah so that's what we were keeping an eye so it was in and, response to that and as the comment rightfully said gibraltar's only got forty thousand people so it is a small test cave yeah. so as far as trying to extrapolate all the data from gibraltar it's probably not the smartest thing to do yeah because on a, on a global pandemic scale basing on forty thousand people is probably not the best mm. metric to use um but obviously like we spoke about during the week one of the hardest things with trying to assess efficacy of these vaccines is especially when you're doing it country to country you've obviously got a whole range of different factors you've got different climates you've got different uh seasons mm. happening at the same time of the year you've got the differences in their healthcare systems like we mentioned last week a lot of those high ranking countries for deaths per million they've probably got terrible uh healthcare uh, mm. options you've got the differences in general health of the population you know like a lot of western nations like america for example or even australia to a degree we've got really big obesity issues mm. so really our deaths per million should be higher based on the fact that covid tends to take out the the people with a high body mass index so what basically to respond to what i'd say this i really appreciate the effort mm. and i understand where you're coming from with it the the hardest thing for me when it comes to uh comparing the the death rates pre-vaccination and post-vaccination is the strain difference because obviously pre you're talking alpha variant which is what the vaccines were based off which was a more deadly but less transmissible variant and then post like after the uh, the vaccination programs got into their 80s or 90 percent targets or whatever it was then you've hit omicron which is a far more transmissible but a far less deadly so you cannot just straight up go the vaccines work that's why more people are getting it but less people are dying because the strains are different and that is reflected in at least my anecdotal experience like i, I haven't told you guys this but due to the liver condition that my wife developed whilst uh she was pregnant as well along with the cmv uh, with jake 
Uh, she's been getting blood tests every six weeks to test for this uh, certain liver enzyme, which has been elevated. Mm. And they also test for COVID antibodies at the same time. And so because she's been getting these tests every six weeks, uh, she got a test about a week and a half ago, which indicated the existence of COVID antibodies, which weren't there on the previous test. So it, it, we were all sick about a month ago. It appears that our family had COVID a month ago, which when we look back at the notifications from daycare, they had COVID go through the center again that week. Right. So Nate's obviously brought COVID home to the family. We've all had it. I honestly just thought, I didn't even test because I just thought I had a head cold. Yeah. And so that's my experience with Omicron. Yeah. So my experience with, with uh, the alpha well, Mine was not even head cold. Right. Mine was a scratchy throat for two hours and then yeah. real tiredness for two days. Yeah. And again, like this is... But everyone's different. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's different. Yeah. But from anecdotal experience and the things that we've been saying the whole time is young, relatively healthy people should not really be too concerned about the virus. And I go, number like in my head, number one, what, if any, benefit would I have received from the vaccine mm. if if I had taken it? It could have made a head cold feel less than a head cold, but it's still just a head cold yep. nonetheless. Uh, number two, and this actually will segue me into something else I wanted to speak about briefly as well, but... Uh, I want to touch on the statistics thing, though. But one, one okay. Is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, this is one of the, uh, the hardest things about this too. None of us will ever know how you would have handled COVID, like if you're vaccinated and you get COVID, none of us can tell you whether yeah. your experience would have been better or worse without we it. We need identical twins yeah, that live together. One is and one isn't. But even then, that could even turn out to be uh, a false narrative too, because you, you would, well, I mean, as long as you maybe check for things like viral loads, like they'd have to have the exact same viral load too. Yeah. Cause that's one of the things that's come out as well with COVID is that a lot of people who get COVID, they only get a small, a low viral load and that's why they're not getting that sick. Whereas the ones who maybe you might be sitting in a room full of people with COVID all the time, like in an office setting or something like that, you get a high viral load and it hits you harder. Like yeah. it, it's really, really hard to, to assess. But I guess at the end of the day, what, what my anecdotal experience says is we are now, I mean, the vaccine rollout started in Australia in February last year. It's now June. We are 14 months into the vaccine rollout. We're at over 90, 95% uh, vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and COVID is still a major problem. It is hospitalizing as many people as it did last year. It is killing more people than it did last mm. year. So from my anecdotal experience, that that's why I, I go, the vaccines aren't working. And they're not doing, or at least they're not doing what we were told they would do. Yeah. I'll, I'll segue into that thing after you talk about your okay, stats. Because so this, this leads into something which is a programming issue, which I'm, I'm okay. very frustrated with. The only thing I find hard to, because I try to stay unemotional and I try to be, I try to define things in a, uh, statistical way right yeah look at markets i look at history of markets mm. gives you a really good idea of what the, what the future is going to be yeah. and it's i feel like there's got to be a way that statistics can tell the story mm -hmm. so maybe gibraltar in australia is uh, for, for all the reasons that were illustrated i agree mm -hmm. it, it's not it's not the right way but can we find like, what would be a fair comparison? Could we find another country that has a similar healthcare system to us, a similar age, similar obesity level? Like, could there has to be, it just said about drilling down, there has to be a way that we can statistically tell whether this thing works or not. Well, you know what the problem is? Like, the, the way that you would normally do that is with the control group in the initial study. Mm. But the problem was Pfizer vaccinated the control group. Yeah. So uh, we, we've mentioned this before, but just to rehash it, in the initial uh, trial that had like 43,000 people in it, whatever the number was, after, it was X amount of weeks, it was like two, three, four weeks, I'm not 100% sure, but after that, they were, they were claiming to show that the um, vaccinated people group were showing a positive uh, outcome from the vaccine. And therefore, because it was a global pandemic, they said it would be unethical to not then go mm. and vaccinate the control group, which 
I can half I can half cop as as a reasoning. Mm. I can half. Yeah, it makes sense. Except for the fact that it's not a study anymore. It's not a study anymore. And that's the that's the frustrating thing, is literally the ground zero people that we should be able to statistically compare because they would have been, well, hopefully, completely randomized, double blind, placebo controlled. Like that's supposed to be the statistical difference. Yeah. Comparing different countries, I don't think is possible because you've got so many different factors. Even Australia, realistically, our outcomes should be better than everyone else because we're more isolated and we get more sunshine. So we get more vitamin D. And everyone knows now the um, correlation between high levels of vitamin D and good outcomes from COVID. So the frustrating thing for me is that statistical thing should be there, but we will never know because they vaccinated the control group. The other thing too to keep in mind is during during the pandemic, and this, this will actually segue me back into what I wanted to talk about. During the pandemic, you gotta remember the sales pitch. The sales pitch was, if we get X amount of people vaccinated, we'll get herd immunity, and this won't be a problem anymore, and life will go back to normal. And that sales pitch was told to us every single day when they reported the hospitalization and death numbers, and they were reporting it based off vaccination status. And now, for months and months and months and months, we still hear about deaths. We don't hear about them blaring about what the vaccination status is. And that is because, if you actually go and look at the stats, a, a very high percentage of people dying from COVID are triple vaccinated. Now, that could literally just be because they are triple vaccinated because they're the most vulnerable group. Yeah. Right? So it might have nothing to do with the vaccine yeah. at all. But it could just be that these are the most vulnerable group to COVID, therefore they're having the worst outcomes. But Technically, it should be 95, 96% higher because the the demographic, the, high, the, the larger percentage is vaccinated. No, sorry. The, it should be the difference between... Like, let's, let's call the number 95. Let's say everyone's 95%. If the death rate was less than 95% of the total death rate, mm. then the difference between those two should be the definition I, I of... I see what you're saying. And I think everyone gets what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you're right. But again, then the problem is when you look at statistics and you go, okay, well, who is statistically the most vaccinated people? They're the most vulnerable people. Who is statistically the least vaccinated people? Probably people like us who are younger, healthier, mm. and aren't as convinced on the necessity for it. Mm. So... Those two groups in itself don't, you can't, it's hard to compare, yeah, right? Unless you stratify for, and this is what is difficult with all of these conversations. And this is why I get frustrated when, at the end of the day, this is what I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. We don't fucking know. <clears throat> yeah. But for two years, or sorry, for 14 months now, since the vaccine rollout began, uh, started, we've been told like they know. Yeah. And it's been adamant and it's been. And this is this also went me in. I, I caught um, this article today actually, and and it's from ABC Online, and it is by Hassan Valley, and the it's t uh, the article is titled "Herd Immunity Was Sold as the Path Out of the COVID Nineteen Pandemic." Here's why we're not talking about it anymore. Uh, and I'll just, I'll read a brief bit. So it says, early in the pandemic, the term herd immunity hit the headlines along with a polarized discussion on how to achieve it. Some groups were attached to the now discredited notion of letting a dangerous virus rip through the population to reach the critical level of population immunity needed to reduce transmission. Loaded wording. Mm. But a more serious conversation, again, loaded wording, focused on the prospect of attaining herd immunity by vaccination. This is the idea that vaccines, when available and taken up at sufficient levels, could squash virus transmission. This would lead to the possible elimination or eradication of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID. The promise was this would herald the return of life back to normal. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So what is herd immunity? You guys know what herd immunity is. It's basically when you get enough people vaccinated so that the virus has no other... Uh, hosts that it can jump to and therefore like a wildfire going through a, a bush that runs out of trees to burn it runs out of fuel and just stops mm -hmm. that was the idea about herd immunity um so it goes down and says this depends on two main parameters the infectiousness of the virus and the effectiveness of the vaccine in short the more infectious the virus and the less effective the vaccine the more people you need to vaccinate to achieve herd immunity 
and then the next tile goes further and further out of reach. As the pandemic progressed, herd immunity via vaccination moved further and further out of reach. In fact, based on what we know about currently circulating viral variants today, herd immunity via vaccination is mathematically impossible. Right. Right. Uh, back at the beginning of 2020, we were grappling with the original strain of SARS-CoV-2, which was much less infectious than current circulating variants. The original strain had an estimated uh, RO, so it's a reproduction number, of two to three. So that means that one person getting it is likely to infect two to three people. That is somewhat... Oh, this guy does the same thing. Uh, if we assume we were working with a vaccine with an effectiveness of 80%, which we now know from the Pfizer documents we're not... This yields a herd immunity threshold estimate of 60 to 80%. That is, when the original strand of the virus was circulating, uh, we would have needed to vaccinate 60 to 80% of the whole population to see the epidemic decline. Interesting they called it epidemic. It's a pandemic. Yeah. Mathematically, at least, this was not out of reach. However, as we know, circumstances have changed dramatically over the course of the pandemic, with the original SARS-CoV-2 virus superseded by far more infectious variants. Although estimates of the infect infectiousness of the variants are subject to some uncertainty, it is reasonable to assume Delta has a reproduction number of about five and Omicron may be in the ballpark of about 20, mm. placing it up there among the most infectious diseases known. Based on these numbers for Delta and Omicron, the herd immunity threshold estimates go up to 100 to 118%. As you cannot vaccinate more than 100% of the population, you can see how relying on vaccination to achieve herd immunity has become progressively more mathematically impossible as the pandemic has progressed. That's not all. Over the course of the pandemic, we have learned more about how the vaccines have performed in the real world and the nature of our immune response. Next title, vaccines don't block all transmission. Herd immunity via vaccination and the calculations above assume vaccines stop transmission 100% of the time. Mm. Now we have known for six, no, eight, 10 months that it doesn't stop transmission. Mm. We've known that. Although vaccines reduce transmission to a significant degree, again, show you working, uh, they do not prevent it completely. If we factor this into our calculations, the challenge to achieve herd immunity becomes harder again. Then it talks about immunity waning uh, over time and then new viral variants. So it says, then we've seen new variants emerge with an ability to evade the immune response. Now that I thought was obviously an interesting thing to say. So, Again, key thing to remember, we're still using the vaccine from the alpha strain. And now they are just coming out and saying, oh, well, the, we've got Omicron's evading immune response, yeah. which is obviously why the RO rate's so much higher. If we had an Omicron-specific vaccine, like Pfizer promised we would in March, maybe I'd be copping that the vaccine's making right. a difference. But you see how they're, they're just putting in all these off-ramps for themselves the whole way through. Uh, any change in the immunogenicity of new variants moves the goalpost further away, compromising our ability to achieve herd immunity to an even greater extent. And it says, so why are we bothering to vaccinate? While attaining herd immunity via vaccination is no longer a realistic proposition, this needs to be put into perspective. Vaccines go hand in hand with other measures. It's better to consider herd immunity as a gradient rather than a binary concept. Don't we hear that a lot <laughs> lately? Nothing's binary anymore. Yeah. That is, even if we don't reach the herd immunity threshold, the greater the proportion of the population vaccinated, the more difficult it becomes for the virus to spread. Again, not like reflected where? in the data. Yeah, like show, show that data. That's right. Yeah. Like, the, the reality is, Omicron's RO rate is 10 times higher than the original alpha strain, which is what this vaccine is based off of, and we've got 95% people vaccinated. Therefore, that's just statistically okay, let me correct. Play Devil's advocate then. Yep. If Pfizer brings out the Omicron uh, version mm. and you see a benefit in the numbers, mm -hmm. what do you think it works? Exactly. Yeah. Like, and this is this is the thing that um, I'll, I'll finish off in a sec. But this is what I want to say: is all I'm seeking is balance. And like, this is the ABC, and this is why I get so upset about it, is the ABC is supposed to be the public broadcaster broadcasting in the public interest. And they're not balanced anymore. They're completely unbalanced. And a lot of it is just because the government is telling them, hey, this is what you have to say. Yeah. That's not good. And to relate it, like human beings, we're monkey see, monkey do. I'll, I'll give you a little, little quick story on it. Uh, our, our mum and dad take care of my son, Nate, on a Friday oftentimes, mm. and they go for a walk. And one of the places they walk past is a place where oldies do, like, either aerobics or they walk past yesterday and they're doing line dancing. Nice. Right? And Nate, little champ, you can see him. It, the cogs start ticking over. I see these people line dancing. And he starts, like, trying to do 
try and do the, the same right. moves. Because you see a group of people doing something and the human instinct is to join that group. Yeah. Same as you've spoken about before with people in fucking lines, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? You see a line, people just join it. Yeah. Monkey see, monkey do. So what concerns me so much is, like I said, the, the entire vaccine rollout st stage of the pandemic, these people that are supposed to be publicly broadcasting for the benefit of the public have been positive that vaccines would solve the problem and they told everyone that that was the case. But this is what gets me even more. The last section here, it says, vaccines protect individuals. Despite the allure of herd immunity, the primary purpose of COVID vaccination has always been to protect individuals from severe illness and death, and thus the impact of disease on the population. That is utter bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Remember back to the pan to the start of the pandy or start of the vaccine rollout. You were had it, you had to get it to protect granny. If you don't get vaccinated, you're going to take the virus home and kill granny. Um, the, the, the teacher's mandate, mandate, the teacher in, mandate. In, right. yeah, in Queensland, they literally said, because won't someone think of the children yeah. because kids under 11 couldn't get vaccinated. So they were saying anyone who stepped foot on a school ground needed to be vaccinated to protect the children. So this is the sort of stuff that we say when this is the, this is the manipulation. And this person, um, Hassan Valley is an associate professor in epidemiology at Deakin university. So they've got credentials. Yeah. This person is lying. And these people read these articles and Lord, we've said it a million times before, they forget. Mm. If they hear something enough times, they forget. So the first thing that people forgot was that the vaccine was told that it was 95% effective at preventing symptomatic uh, uh, infection. Yeah. That was the first thing, the headline number. Now everyone's going, oh, well, no, it was never supposed yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just supposed to prevent severe disease, illness, and death. Now, the next thing that they're trying to make you forget is that, oh, it was never about stopping transmission. It was about protecting you. Yeah. It was just about protecting the individual that got vaccinated. Yeah. Well, hold on. If that was the intention the entire time, why were every single individual who chose not to take part in the protection, why did they have their movements restricted, yeah. their employment prospects restricted, their abilities to... Uh, leave the country or the state restricted yeah. or re-enter the country that they are a fucking citizen of. This is bullshit. This is mental conditioning. And honestly, I'm, I'm appalled with this level of manipulation from our public news service. It's always been like that. I get it. And people need to know about it and they need to call and it out and need to be aware of it when it's happening. But I think it is being, I think, I think, people are realizing that because they're moving away from these streams of yep. information. I also said to you boys too, you can tell that things are shifting because um, all of a sudden, like in the last week or so, every time I log into Facebook, I get a sponsored ad from the World Health Organization about the vaccines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time yeah. I send them through to you when I get them. Yeah. You go through the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I wonder if that's just algo. I wonder if your algo is just showing stuff that now it could be it could be out could be my algo, but these comments were the ones that were censored last year. I don't think they're being censored anymore, and I think a lot of that has to do with Elon's potential acquisition of Twitter. Because I, I was listening to um, Joe Rogan with Lex Friedman uh, yesterday, and one of the interesting things that Rogan said is he goes, one of the things that happened that was really interesting to him when Elon first. Uh, made the offer to buy Twitter was that within a couple of weeks, his followers on Twitter went up by 800,000 people seemingly overnight. Right. So in other words, he's like, have I just not realized I've been shadow banned on Twitter the entire time. And then when Elon was trying to make the acquisition, all of a sudden Twitter starting to burn these algos that they yeah. had built in. Well, I, I said that I said that they will be on like a red line trying that's to right. change the algorithm because when it comes out yeah and it's not just going to be twitter that's doing that it's going to be every social media company that's been doing it the whole time trying to cover their tracks and i feel like some of these comments that you're starting to see is the people that they would have been making those comments but you never would have seen them because they would have like shadow banned those comments from people's feeds where so now it's changing but sorry just to get back to what i was saying before when human beings are monkey see monkey do that's why this is a problem because 
for for such a long period of time with this online censorship stuff, if you don't even get to see the other perspective, yeah, how can you possibly you just naturally join the line and go with what sure. everyone else is doing? That's what people That's do. Why Web three is the future. I had a conversation last night with a mate of mine that he, like he's a massive tech nerd, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to. Kid, he'd met a guy that is the biggest proponent of Web three. He said he tried to change the conversation like ten times, yeah. and it all just wrangled back on what, yeah. what, with, what Web3 was. So he was a real enthusiast. Yeah, I was like, man, I want to meet this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and we talked about, he was like, yeah, but if everything that you want to buy is on Web2, mm-hmm. you're not going to go to Web3. And I said, Web2 is like the old rundown mall yeah. that you go to. Once one of the shops that you like is in the brand new flash, new featured, fountain-filled new one mm-hmm. you're going to go there and web 2 is going to die or it could even just be it is similar as similar as like web 2 is going to those old rundown shops web 3 is just ordering it online from the comfort of your phone you know? yeah 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 it could, like, it could be a few, yeah, but, yeah. Like, but um this is an example of why you want decentral well it may or may not, we could be wrong we could be like yeah. I, I i'm not i'm not uh I'm stu- we still haven't had proof yeah. yet. I think well, I think we've seen a lot, but it's there's no definitive line of the sand to say like, okay, right, this this side's wrong, this, this side's mm-hmm. right. But I do know, and I agree with what you said. There's no way to find the truth if you're only shown one side. Exactly. And I th- and that's the problem with having Google, Facebook, Amazon mm-hmm. effectively run Web two. Yeah, agreed. It's, it's, it's monopolization. And yeah. we all know that monopolies lead to corruption. Yeah. Like it just, it's just a fact of life. It just happens. And I'm not angry about it because I understand it, Yeah. but I just want everyone to know about it yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of people still don't know about it. Yeah. And unfortunately the, the majority of people who don't know about it are, are boomers really, because they've trusted everything their entire lives and they don't know which dark corners of the internet to go to mm. and by dark corners of the internet i mean the audio podcast <laughs> uh to find information that's yeah. outside of the of the the purview you know like it's just it's it's sad and i don't know if like you said it's been happening forever yep it's just never been more apparent as it is now and my my hope out of all of this is that our generation and the younger kids growing up in this time we will acknowledge it and move away from these traditional systems. I, okay, so I think it's something different to you. I, I believe that a lot of young people now are far more tech savvy than they ever were before. Mm-hmm. So they can, they can smell a rat quicker than what we can smell a rat. Yeah. I, I believe that. Okay. However, I believe there's a larger cohort that now has access to more information than they've ever been able to wield yeah. ever. And for whatever reason, they just don't use it. That's that's the big thing that I I because I I think, and again, this is not. Um, it's probably been the same forever. Lot of headline readers. Yeah. Lot of headline yeah, 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 readers. They'll go and recite the headline and don't actually don't actually read it. Yeah. And and what you would find is. The truth is usually at the very bottom of the That's article. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. They uh, can say all this stuff, set up, set up, set the scene. Yeah. But the moral of the story, which is at the at the at the bottom, no one gets to. That's right. And they know that. I think I sent you guys an article the other day, which was about monkeypox, and it was a, such a long article that repeated itself over and over and over and over again. Really bad writing. And then I'm like, where's? The, I know this is a sales pitch. Where's yeah. this going? Yeah. And then the last sentence, I circled and sent to you guys. It was basically there are experimental vaccines in development for this disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So in, other, yeah, in yeah. other words, like, it's exactly the same with COVID. They set up the fear throughout all the article. You're creating urgency. You're literally creating a market because people who have never been worried about monkeypox before because they've never heard of it, that was me, all of a sudden, now there's this problem. It's going all over the world. Oh, we're in, we're in the pandemic age now. I literally read an article the other day saying, this is the pandemic age. Mm. Is it? We've had one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is it? Yeah. Um, and again, they're just creating a new market for a new medical product. Can we pivot to your thoughts on Labor government? 
Um, While you think about it, I can talk about something that... You, you talk about it, because I'm, I'm going to be fair, like, Frank, I haven't been paying attention, because I've just been too busy with sick kids. Yeah. So my life has literally been, wake up at five, enjoy my one hour to have my coffee in the dark in the morning, alone, it's the best time of the day, <laughs> go to work, work all day, and in a, in a thing where I basically just listen to podcasts, and I don't listen to any, like, current news of affairs from Australia podcasts, just, just to sort of give you an example of what to about for, one of my favourite news podcasts to listen to from, to keep up on American news, is Breaking Points, yep. and the reason why I like Breaking Points is the whole point of the show is you've got Crystal and Saga, Crystal is left-leaning, Saga is right-leaning, they like each other and respect each other, they disagree on things all the time, yep. but you get a balanced view of the issues. That's all I'm asking for out of the ABC. I just want a balanced view of the issues. Did you see Did you see the one that was up today talking about the Washington Post, like the the reporters within the Washington Post like at each other's throats about like woke topics yeah and the, the, the eating disorder did you see the eating no it wasn't an eating disorder they called it something they called it something different mm. the guy he's 22 years old one of the reporters had he had complained he complained he'd written an article about his eating disorder which is he doesn't know how much he's supposed to eat <laughs> and there was a buffet yeah and he thinks that the buffet needs to change the way that it delivers food, but for people like him, that they should allocate a certain amount of food to give to him, so he knows that that's how much food he's supposed to eat. Yeah. So the, okay, this is this is what concerns me about this next generation. Like you're saying, tech savvy people have all the information at their fingertips, choose not to use it but just try to paint themselves as a victim in everything. Everything, yeah. And that woke off was literally that. It yeah, was yeah, them, yeah. like, it started with someone having a problem with a joke that someone had retweeted. Yeah. It wasn't even their joke. Yeah. They just retweeted and going, huh, this is funny, which we all do. And then to try to make sure that they were giving themselves protection, they were literally just going, I'm, like, a, a woman of colour who's LGBTIQ, and this is why what you did was wrong. You see, I'm the plus, and that's why what you did was wrong. Yeah, like, it was it was so but, insane. But that eating thing, I thought, was, I'd never heard that before. I was like, wow, that is wild. I've got that eating disorder. No, 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 no. No, you have no bounds. I don't think he was saying... I don't think he was saying he eats too much. I think he was saying he's just... It gives him anxiety to know how much he's supposed to eat. Yeah. See, <laughs> this that was wild. This war's a did good thing. Did you see what? Did you see what? Um, what Crystal said about it? Uh, she even she goes. She she goes and she's not. She's like the least conspiracy. Yeah. And yeah, again, yeah. I like it too. I yep. like the balance. Yeah. But she goes. I'm convinced this is a CIA psyop on on, on to, to just see what they can do yep. to a like a, a community to yep. see what kind of pressure they can do by having a woke off throwing the. What was that meme? It's like uh, having an, um, having the room from Saw, the movie Saw, mm. and, and there's two people in there and it's there's one vaccine in the middle of the room, but to inject yourself with it, you have to renounce Ukraine. <laughs> you support for Ukraine. <laughs> and it's like, what would you do? Ah, yeah, well, right. see, this is, this is the thing. Like, um, it's funny how when there's no real conflict, all of this stuff seems to be a big deal. But as soon as there is conflict, traditional gender norms become, they come back real quick. Like, so literally on the way up this morning, I was listening to ABC radio because my Bluetooth audio wouldn't work. And you mean my Bluetooth audio? I wasn't going to out you. Um, <laughs> but I was listening to ABC radio and this whole news story comes up where they're discussing how, uh, the women and children fleeing Ukraine, how dangerous it is for them. Uh, and they, they, they literally said, primarily because they're not traveling accompanied by men. So all of a sudden, like, you know, so, so ABC has been pushing this like male, female, they're exactly the same thing for the last 12 months. But now it's like, oh, now all the women and children are in danger because they're not being protected by the men that they would normally be traveling with. But they're talking about how bad the women and children have got it. What about the men? What about the men who aren't allowed to leave the country because they have to fight a war they didn't start? What about them? So, so. But like, no, 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 let's be real though. Like, everyone in a relationship knows 
that it would be his fault. <laughs> You'd be sitting there going, yeah, you have fun at the front line while I deal with the kids. I'm stuck here at home with the uh, kids. Hey. I would love to fight the Russians. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, you know, like that's, that's. Amazing. It's not my fault. I need to breastfeed. I want to be on the front line, but you get to go and have you fun with your mates. You get to be with the boys on the front line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's legit. And probably the guy, and, and the guys are sitting there going like, I'm going to the front line. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I really hope I got the bullet today. <laughs> They're sitting there in Mariupol going, Man, I'd, like, I'd rather be the foxholes here than at home. It's rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I just found it so interesting. Because, like, look, I cop it. It's really bad for the women and children. And obviously... It's when bad you for have everyone. 100%. And when you have a mass exodus of women and children, the danger of sex trafficking and all that sort of stuff goes up. I, I cop that. But just the way that the, the entire article like was worded, I'm just like... You're literally trying to say that the women and children have it worst, and they're not the ones. Like I think the I think I heard a stat the other day that 140 Ukrainian men are dying every day right. in the war. Like that's pretty bad. That's bad. Yeah, I feel like modern day journalism, and it could have been. Yeah, it's, I'll call it that. Modern day journalism is not journalism. It's opinion pieces. Ha, no, have opinions. No, no. I'll, I'll say journalism. Find. So, so I, I see it in their head. They roll out the story, okay, the full story, yep. and they, they, they read the story, and they know what the story is, and they go, what's going to be the grenade? Yeah, what's the hot topic of today? Yeah, and then they grab that slither, slither of it, isolate it, remove yeah. the story, and then you're like, okay, how do I make a story out of this? Yeah, yeah. And, and because it's about clicks. Clickbait. It's about, yeah. yeah. I, I don't like to use the word clickbait. It's all clickbait. It's though. about clicks it's about um i don't think they care what they're doing to i don't think they care what they're doing to civilization mm -hmm. because they're doing what's right for them yeah this is this is a point that rogan made because this came up and lex friedman was literally saying that he fe he wonders because they're talking about the mass shooting in uvalde which was horrible but he lex was talking about he goes i i just wonder how complicit the media is in these things reoccurring because they give it so much airtime. Mm. So if you were someone who hates the world enough to do the most heinous thing that you possibly can, which is killing other people's children, you get the most impact by the media taking that story and broadcasting it everywhere. Mm. And not only doing that, but it is an exhibition. Yeah. It's but, intended to be an exhibition. And and the exact same thing as what you just said has happened with that is instead of talking about why this particular person did that thing it's gone pfft, gun control like straight away politicized this is a gun control debate and which turns into the abortion which yeah turns it, into it's the, all the same shit yeah, right yeah. but it's like it's exactly what you said uvalde school shootings the story what's the hot button topic gun control let's pull that element out of it that's the story we run and we we use the story from texas because they the yeah the, the, but there's the gun been state. but there's been a shooting every day that's since. right yeah and, and like, so I'll give you another example of, of biased reporting. Uh, ABC News reporting, there's the January 6th commission happening at the moment. Mm. And the way they introduced it, they were, they were playing, they were saying the Donald Trump inspired insurrection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they played all these clips of Donald Trump speaking. And it's all the usual ones you've heard with the quotes of him saying, yeah, go down there and fight like hell. And if we don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country. And every single time they do this, they always leave out the part where he says, we're going to go down there and we're going to make our voices be heard peacefully and patriotically. Yeah. That's a literal line he said before it happened. Yeah. But everywhere leaves that out. Mm. So obviously they want you all to hate Donald Trump. And I get it. It's probably good for business if, if Donald Trump doesn't get reelected for them. I cop that. But like Rogan said it, he goes... You can't blame these people for doing this stuff because traditional journalism is a dying art. Mm. They're losing money hand over fist. C the CNN Plus experiment was the perfect example of that. It was a hundred million, hundred million yeah. dollar investment, which got canned in eighteen days. Yeah. So they are dying in the ass. So they've been backed into a corner, and they're doing anything they can to get clicks and revenue, anything they possibly can. And as Lex said, yeah, but just because you're desperate doesn't give you the right to be a shitty person no but uh, people are going to do whatever they need to do to help themselves 
And if it means if it means changing the course of culture, yeah, it doesn't matter mm. because if you look at the individual, like. They're going to put food on the table. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the way. And you I look see. at... So I'm not surprised. You look at all these, particularly out of America, but we're seeing some of it in Australia too, but a lot of like the hot button topics at the moment are things centered around like, you know, uh, different genders or like all... all I'm, I'm going to call them wokeisms. I don't like the word because I don't want to be dismissive of it yep. because some of these things are are genuine issues that need to be spoken about. Yeah, real about, stuff, yeah. Right? Um, but a lot of it is... The buffet one. It, that's a wokeism. Is it though? I just think that's an excuse for being a fat fuck. Is he fat? Don't know. Because when I go to a buffet, what I know how much to eat. It's as much as possible. That's the point of going to a buffet. Yeah. It is. The food's not the best quality. No. It never is. I mean, QT Bazaar Buffet. At I had a really good buffet good. in New Zealand. Yeah. It's one of the best buffets. And I'm not a buffet guy because I'm not a big eater. No, because not a big eater. I'm a big eater. So like, if I, if I go to a buffet... I'm going to consume as much food as I possibly can to get as much value for money out of my investment. So this, as you I reckon this can. reporter's meat sweats are so bad that they had to write an article about it? I no, I, no. I just think that is symptomatic of him. I'm, I'm assuming this. He's a straight white male, and he's just trying to find his his body armor because <laughs> he doesn't. I'm not LGBTQ. I'm not brown. I'm not some minority. Uh, 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 the buffets don't tell me how much to eat. <laughs> That's all he's looking for. Oh, That's the buffets right. are against me. Yeah. I'm being victimized by buffets that I go to because I don't know how much to eat. I heard someone say the other day, like, it's not enough now to be a gay white man. Like, it's not enough. No, it's not. It's not enough. Like, it's you not. need more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel... I I love Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon's he's one of my the, favorite he comedians. He's the best at the time. But one of the reasons why he can go so hard in the paint about everything he does is because he's like, hey, I'm gay. Yeah, <laughs> like, even about he's it. got the body armor. He can do Come that stuff. Right? It's it's the best. And I'm glad he's got it because he's a very special guy and we need people yeah, like we, him yeah, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, we need to wrap this up. All right. Let's wrap it up there, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, We've what? got some very exciting stuff coming. Too, yeah, we do. We? So remember, we, we made some promises for uh, episode 100 and we, we've we got those things coming. Now, I mean, one of the things that we do have done already is we've got new lights in here, which um, I think is better. We got a little bit of extra shine on the poster. Well, I think I've, I, I've addressed it a little bit, but we're trying to do something with the video to stop it from flashing. Yeah, yeah. So we are we are doing some upgrades. So uh, we appreciate you guys bearing with us. and Yeah, again, same money, same cash. Yeah, same yeah, Bitcoin. same Bitcoin. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us, guys. We'll see you next video.